Hello, my internet friends. John Gibson here with I Need Examples. Today I will cover the Excel year frac function. The year frac function returns year difference between two dates, but also includes the days resulting in a fraction of a year. So when comparing two dates in the same year, the result will be less than or equal to one. Any two dates longer than a year will have a result greater than one, meaning that the result is at least one year, and then the decimal value is a fraction of a year. There are two requirements for the Excel year frac function, start date and end date. Time is not used in the year frac function and will always be seen as 12 a.m. So a full year is January 1st, 12 a.m. of the current year to January 1st of the next year, 12 a.m. There is one optional requirement, basis. The basis will determine how the result is computed. There are five options for this argument. Zero, which is the default, this is based on 30 by 360 day count, meaning 12 months with 30 days in each month, having a 360 day year with the year starting on January 1st and ending on January 1st of the next year. A basis of one is actual actual. This means the actual days in each month and the actual days in a year. So for January 1st, 2023, it will be 31 days in the month with 365 days counted between January 1st and January 1st of the next year. Base 1 will be the exact fraction of the year and is the best use out of the five bases if you need the most accurate result. A base 2 or 3 is actual 360 or actual 365, respectively. The actual days in each month are counted, but the year will only consist of 360 days or 365 days. These types of day counts are mostly used in financial institutions. A base of 4 is the same as a base 0, except it is the European setting. The difference is how a 30-day month is determined. I will show an example of this in the basic examples. If you wish to follow along, I have linked to the Excel workbook in the description below. In our basic example, I will go over each basis using the year frac function so you can see how it affects the results. In row 2 through 7, we will use January 1, 2023 through January 1, 2024. This will give us a full year, either 360 or 365 days. In rows 7 through 11, we will use February 25th, 2023 through May 4th, 2023. In column A, we have our start date. In column B, we have our end date. Column C will be our basis. Column D will be our results. To show how the fractions will work, I will use column E to compute the days based on the basis using the results in column D. And in column F, I will show the actual days between column A and column B using the date diff function. I have a link in the description below to my date diff function tutorial. So first, let's set up our formula in column D. In cell D2, let's enter the formula equals year frac, open parentheses, A2 for our start date, comma B2 for our end date, and comma C2 for our basis, close parentheses. There, our formula is now in place and we have our results. Let's review them. For row two, our result is one. This is because every month is using 30 days with the 360 day year. Since we are looking for January 1st, 2023 to January 1st, 2024, that is 12 four months with 30 days in each month. 12 times 30 equals 360. And as we are basing this on a 360 day calendar, 360 divided by 360 equals one. That is the result we have in cell D2. Also know that the actual days between the two dates are 365. This will be the consistent value in the first set of rows I am covering. For row 3, our result is also 1. We have 360 days in 2023, and we are looking for a full year using actual days in 2023, which is 365. So 365 divided by 365 equals 1. In row 4, our return value is 1.0138889. Now this is because we are using actual days for each month, so January to January will have 365 days. But we are only going to use 360 days of our calendar year. So 365 divided by 360 gives us 1.0138889. Now, since we are using actual days in each month, if we compute 360 times D4, we get 365 days. So no days are lost using a 360-day calendar. They are just represented in a fraction of a year. 
The same is true for row 5, except in this case we are still using the actual months in a day using 365 days in a year, giving us a value of 1. 365 divided by 365 equals 1. Leap years will affect this fraction, making it greater than 1. If I change the start and end dates to 2024 and 2025, you will see my result is now 1.00273970. The .0027397 value is accounting for the extra day, February 29th, 2024. Also, you will see that my days in column E and F have changed to 366 days, which is correct. Row 6 is using the European rules to determine days in each month. In this example, it will have no bearing on the end results. I will show you an example shortly of when this will change the results. For now, since we are dealing with a 30-day-a-month calendar and 360 days, and we are looking for a full year, the rules apply as they did in base 0. 12 months times 30 days equals 360, with 360 days in a year, 360 divided by 360 equals 1. Looking at our next result set, we are using February 25, 2023 to May 4, 2023. The decimal value is the fraction of a year. I will not go over each row, but as you can see, there is a one-day difference between row 7 and row 8. This is because row 7 is using a 360-day year, and row 8 is using the actual days in a year. This is important to remember when you're needing actual versus non-actual days in the function. To show how a base 0, US 30 by 360, differs from the base 4 European 30 by 360, let's look at rows 13 through 19. In cell D14, let's enter our formula, equals year frac, open parentheses, A14, comma, B14, comma, C14. The rules using base 0, US 30 by 360, and base 4, European 30 by 360, is that every month has 30 days. So in rows 14 and 15, it makes sense that looking from February 1st to March 1st, we will have 30 days. But if we change the start date to February 29th, this is where the rules change. Using rows 16 and 17 as our example, we will use February 29th, 2024 to March 1st, 2024. 2024 is a leap year, so the last day of the month is February 29th. For the US base zero, the last day of the month, regardless of the value, will always be 30. But for the European base 4, if the day value in the start date or end date is less than 30, it will use that value. So for February 29th, even though it is the last day of the month, the formula will see it as 29. Since every month has to have 30 days when the calculation is done, it will count February 29th as one day and February 30th as day 2, giving a difference of two days between February 29th and March 1st. For the US 30 by 360 base 0, February 29th will be seen as February 30th in this calculation. So the day difference between February 29th and March 1st is 1. For rows 18 and 19, looking at a non-leap year, February 28th, 2023 to March 1st, 2023 in base 0 is still 1 day. But in the European base 4, it is now 3 days because it added 2 days to February, February 29th and February 30th to complete the rule set. For a practical example, we are wanting to flag some products based on the exact age from today. Here's our basic food table. In column A, we have our food ID. Column B, we have the date it was made. I'm using the formula today plus a numeric value to calculate my days. I have a video on the today function linked in the description below. Column C is where we will have the age shown as a percentage of the year, and in column D is where we will set our quality flag. Let's start with the age. In cell C2, our formula will be equals year frac, open parentheses, B2, comma, today, open and close parentheses, comma, one, close parentheses. We are using base one because we want an exact value. There, now we have our age. Now let's set up our quality column. I know there are a number of ways to set this value, but in this example, I will use the ifs function. Link to the video in the description below. In cell D2, our formula will be equals ifs, open parentheses, C2 equals double quote, double quote, comma, double quote, need, age, 
double quote, comma, C2 less than or equal to 0.25, comma, double quote, good, double quote, comma, C2 is less than or equal to 0.5, comma, double quote, fair, double quote, comma, C2 is less than or equal to 0.75, comma, double quote, poor, double quote, comma, C2 is greater than 0.75, comma, double quote, bad, double quote, close parentheses. There, now we have set up our quality value and can easily see what products have gone bad and which products are still in good shape. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Comment below if you would like to see examples on a specific topic. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.